Hey everyone, uh, we're going to tr go through the steps here involved in setting out a valley rafter uh, for a roof. Um, uh, this uh, this particular example here, it's a situation where two roofs, two roof surfaces on plan are intersected at 90 degrees on plan and have the same pitch and span. And um, they of course then create a valley. And usually that valley line on plan, uh, if you're looking at uh, drawings, um, they usually it's a 45 degree on plan. So that indicates to you that both surfaces are of the same pitch when you see the valley line drawn in at 45 degrees. Just want to make that point there quickly. So uh, just let's uh, just delve into it here. So, so first step is to, to create a side square and basically um, a side square is just two rafters, two straight rafters held together to form an L and the angle of that L uh, should be 90 degrees. So this is animated here and using mathematics, using the 345 method, uh, you'll be able to um, get that those two legs to be at 90 degrees to each other. So if you have three units this way and four units this other way, then when you bring this to five units here, then you know you have a, uh, a right angle triangle. That's basically the message that's been um, presented here. So um, first thing we need to establish is the rise of this roof that we're, uh, we're working on. So hook your tape from outside a wall plate to outside of the other wall plate. Take half of that and that is half the span and use that formula that's written here. Now I use that formula there, that'll give you the rise of up, up, usually the shorter leg of the square. Now we need to mark the uh, going off at 90 degrees of that, which is the valley run. So to get that, um, we'll have to um, use this formula that's on the screen here, which is um, half the span uh, multiplied by the square root of 2 and hit the equal sign and that would be our valley run. And that um, would give you that other distance there then. And... Uh, just want to mention in passing that um, the square root 2, it's a quick way of getting the diagonal of a square. Uh, so if you have a 3 foot by 3 foot square, well if you multiply 3 foot by the square root 2, you will get the diagonal of the square. But it only works on the diagonal of a square, not a rectangle. So just bear that in mind. Okay, so continuing on, that's being marked there now on the leg of the square. And uh, that's our valley run. Um, so step four, uh, mark the valley tail run on the side square, which is the next thing it has to do. And next thing, there's a handy formula there again. And uh, again, this formula is um, common tail run multiplied by the square root of two. Uh, now, the reason the square root of two works here is because if you look at the uh, common tail run on plan in relation to the valley tail run, it, it, it they both run at 45 degrees to each other. It is the diagonal of a square. The longer line of the, or the longer the, the diagonal would be the valley tail run then on that square if you really think about it. So that's what that's the formula is based on really, you know. Um, so yeah, you measure in there with my tape and mark that away. And there you go. And now I've drawn a pencil line here, a very faint line right here. And we'll be, we'll be holding the back of our rafter in line with that. And we'll hold the corner of our rafter to this point here. And we're using the outside of the square. So that's the that's the right angle triangle we're dealing with, the the one that contains the outside of the square and this back line here. So that'll come into play here. Now you'll see the hip rafter coming in. Uh, so we'll place the hip rafter on the side square now. And um, yeah, here we go. And uh, there's my bevel coming up. So you swing, you'll be swinging the blade in line with the rise leg of the square. And once you have that angle set there, you've set to up your, your plumb cut. And that same plumb line then will occur down here and down here. It's the same angle. So that'll be animated here now, just to show you. So you set it, you have to mark it, and then you slide your bevel down the back of the valley. And then you uh, mark it again. And uh, you come back down and you get the uh, fascia cut for that valley. These are only initial lines. There will be deductions have to be made so afterwards. So I'm doing the initial lines in white here. So um, uh, deductions at the valley tail is the next um, um, animation here. So um, so there's a fascia cut and there's a heel cut that we have to look at. So I'm going to zoom in close here uh, to where the side square and the uh, after meets. So here you see 
here th this is our side square with the side of the va valley rafter here and this is the plan view of that same valley rafter now and there's the corner of the wall plate in orange that is coming over i just drew i just drew the two side by side so you can correlate the two views and you see where the deductions are coming from so i'll just animate them there for a second and you see that little uh, red triangle that just moved there it was here so that that corner was in line with the inside corner of the on the wall plate there so you can see why there's a deduction we're going to deduct from this line back half the thickness of the hip it's or sorry the valley itself and um and you can see that's why because that will be the distance from there to there is half the uh the uh, valley thickness uh so we'll just play that on there and you can see it sort of makes sense there it's been animated through you know See, so that's the new line now you've drawn that black line that'll be the new line the new heel line and that will form part of the bird's mouth and you can see the white line has become redundant there now uh, so um, the next thing is the fascia cut line here so again that was offset from there back to there half the thickness of the hip itself so and uh, here's just an image to illustrate that yeah. So um, <clears throat> here I just popped into quickly the fascia detail. Uh, often you'll see on drawings of hips that then, sorry, not uh, uh, valleys, I should say. I keep mixing my hips and valleys up in this. Um, <clears throat> they'll make a corner, they'll make a V, like a bird's mouth here down at the fascia to take in the corner of the fascia as it returns around. But I tend to just go straight across, with a, set the skill sort 45 degrees when I'm running it up this line here and tilt have a tilted 45 make just make a full cut and let the fascia fly on i think it's a stronger better detail so i'll just animate here what i'm really basically talking about um, you can see the fascia coming in there that's the top edge of the fascia you're looking at and then you put in a lash in line with that red line that i brought through i'm just drawing right now out from the center of the top edge of the valley and um, uh, there is my lash in place and now there's the returning fascia so that's the type of detail I have down there, you know, so just want to play that there, so uh, yeah, this is the next thing here uh, we are going to uh, mark the valley rafter as um, seat cut so the we have the back line of our bird's mouth here already but the opposite of that, which is at 90 degrees will be the seat cut line, so uh, that is determined by the upstand here, taken from the common rafter so you'll already have your commons cut and you'll take this distance from here to here and make sure you come down that distance from the back of your valley down onto here so um, I'll just play that on there now and you'll see what I'm talking about basically uh, that's that distance coming across onto there that then determines where the seat line of our bird's mouth will be uh, positioned so uh, basically you take a bevel swing the blade of your bevel so it lines up with the underbelly of the valley as um, shown here and then when that's done then you just flip it around and then slide that bevel then down the underbelly of your valley and now you have the position uh, at the end of that upstand distance that we took earlier from the common that determines now where I'm going to mark my uh, seat cut uh, for the bird's mouth on the valley so um, next thing uh, we're just going through the deductions at the top of the valley rafter so firstly here I'm shown the top edge of the two ridges where they come together at 90 degrees and um, I'll, uh, I'm just going to uh, superimpose uh, the side square against that scenario as well here now so we'll, so you can see how they relate to each other so here's our we're zooming down onto the down onto our side square and I'm just placing the two uh, top edges of the ridge there just to show you where the deductions are coming from at the top so we'll just draw in a center line here first so you see basically anytime you make calculations with rafters uh, no one knows what thickness uh, roof components you have so it has to be based on center lines first and after that then you can see where the deductions come from here so here's our the plan view of that same valley coming in here so this is the same valley you're looking at just as you're looking at the side of this one and uh, 
here we are now we're going to have to take the first deduction uh, so as you notice the tip of this valley only got as far as here it didn't get to where the line diagram version of that roof is shall we say so this is the distance which if you look at it is a 45 degree line going halfway across the thickness of the ridge so the deduction is half the diagonal thickness i do call it of the ridge board so you draw a line 45 degrees measure half it you can also calculate it mathematically again use the square root of two rule if you like take half the thickness of the ridge multiply it by the square root of two and you will get that distance from here to here then okay because it is the diagonal of a square so you can use that as well so i'll continue on the animation here and you'll see where i'm coming from so there's the first deduction and that's the point looking at the side of the hip or sorry the valley there and then the shoulder line to form that point is coming down now and right here onto the side of the same valley so you can see how they both correlate to each other there uh, here's your deductions as I uh, previously mentioned and here's the second deduction which is a half mere just half the thickness of itself half the thickness of the valley you know, in other words so here now we're going to cut the top of the valley and I just you'll see ingrain coming here then because that's a point and this line will have to be transferred to the far side as well because you'll be that'll be your skill saw line that you'll be cutting on with the blade tilted at 45 so that points in the center then so there's your ingrain and um, so now we're going to cut the valley rafter tail here so we've already marked from previous so um, again cut uh, cut it off there now that cut would you see happen there that's a 45 degree cut even though you can't see from this side so you're running the skill saw here but the blade is tilted at 45 and there's the hidden detail of the um, obtuse shoulder on the far side there so i'll just pop that in there just for, to make the point um here you um i know you could s set the skill saw at 45 degree when you're cutting along this line here and the point then would fit neatly into the corner of your wall plate for the valley but in practice most people will just leave the skill saw at 90 degrees and just cut that line as you would a regular bar's mold so it's up to yourself uh, here we're determining the valley tail soffit cut so again you go to the length of your fascia cut on your common rafter and whatever that distance is on the side of your um valley you'll have to keep that same you'll have to keep that same distance um sorry out here yeah so you see that animation here now basically making the point that i'm after verbalizing there so uh, here we go so there's the line shooting across and you can see at the bottom of that red line then that determines then where your soffit goes so your soffit on your valley and um, common are in line or on the one plane uh, here's some tips basically when you are nailed in the valley um, uh, you don't want the you know, the big danger is with a hip or a valley that as you're nailing on the jacks that it could bend sideways so you what we're doing here you'd also do with a hip so you draw um, draw a line up the center up the center of the rafter that you see here the valley rafter the top edge of it and it's see the stretch here in yellow make a few broken lines all the way up the all the way up the rafter you can do this on the ground for you so you won't have to be climbing and have that line already on and then um, you'll see here after this line is sprung we uh we then put a nail down here and another end and we spring a builder's line between those two nails and once the builder's line lines up with the uh, line we drew on the top edge of the valley then we know that valley has not been to to the left or to the right uh, so uh, because that would also affect the position of our uh, cuts down below so uh, yeah so here's the nail now yeah. and uh, there's our line Just, uh, yeah, making a point here that uh, sometimes you might drop in a hip or a valley and you might find it drops a bit shy on top. That sometimes is due to the fact that maybe the corner of the wall plate is slightly falling down off level a little bit. So check it with your level to see and you might have to wedge it up slightly. You know. Or vice versa, it could be the other way too. So, so that's just a little point I said I'd make there. Uh, towards the end and here's another little point I want to make basically in relation to uh, when you're nailing the jacks onto the um, valley uh, sometimes 
some people like to have the top edge of the jack in line with the center line on our valley and the theory is that you can uh, get your valley board which is shown here actually what if you imagine that valley board here and you'd have it hidden here of course then you'd have to miter it you have to put a miter here and have its uh, opposite half come coming in to meet it so basically that'd be dihedral angle you'd have to calculate and then half that dihedral angle would be the bevel here so uh, most people that i know they don't bother doing that because if you look over here um this if you just leave a square and you know most most corners and most timber now it is all planed all around anyway on the corners so it, it all it, it's already overhanging in over the edge of the valley as it is so if you plane a small bit off here it'll even hang in a bit more so a lot of people just run electric planer up there just to get in a bit more and okay if there's a little bit of a space left after where they're touch underneath rather than having a miter you know the, most people don't worry too much about that once the once these two tips touch or come close to touch and it's usually okay but you know, it's up to yourself again just said and make that little point here towards the end you know um, so yeah so um, hopefully that's of use and um, uh, yeah so that's it folks all the best alright